a strawberry farm in Guatemala, a wheat field in South Africa, a sidewalk cafe in Paris. Different scenes, different parts of the world, but connected. And that connection starts here. Between 3 and 10, then that is left to national authorities. Thank you. Meet Codex Alimentarius, the United Nations organization that establishes the world's food standards. Standards based on science that guide global food production, ensure that it's safe and that it's traded fairly. Codex Alimentarius and its technical committees make the connection between this and this and this. For consumers, what could be more straightforward than shopping for bread? High fibre means it's healthy. But what is fibre? And when it says high in fibre, higher than what? What's the reference point? Critical bits of information that the world's consumers can take for granted because of the debates that take place in meetings such as this one. Global food trade has given us a food world without seasons. Winter apples arrive from the United States in time for Christmas in Guatemala where it's summer. Avocados leave South Africa for Europe where it's winter. Strawberries are available year-round, everywhere. Behind this global flow of safe-to-eat food is a series of standards and guidelines and codes of practice that have been developed, painstakingly developed, based on a portfolio of scientific data amassed and analysed by the Codex Alimentarius Commission and its more than 180 members. So Japan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Maybe in the end of the state, we can add focus, including ready-to-eat seafood. The work is done in technical committees. Crudo, parcialmente tratado, puede ser un alimento listo para el consumo. Esa es la idea. Such as this one held in Guatemala City that deals with food hygiene, assessing the risks of foodborne bacteria and viruses found in fresh and processed foods. But we can discuss that as a committee. committee and recommending measures to reduce risks. When we say or this committee, meeting in Cape Town, South Africa, that deals with nutrition, uh, making sure that nutritional uh, claims can be backed up by science. I think it's quite relevant that uh, we look at this uh, definition in a new concept. Other Codex committees set standards for fresh fruits and vegetables that determine everything from size to colour. They determine how much residue of a pesticide can be left on a crop when it's harvested. Or residue of veterinary drugs used in animal production. In all, some 20 committees meet in venues such as these to look at the scientific evidence, hear from representatives of the food industry, listen to the comments of consumer groups, those who agree and who disagree with the proposals being debated. But in the end, it's the members themselves who decide, by consensus, what the Codex standards will be. I think if, uh, if uh, the, the, the consensus is that we leave it the way it is, I'm ready to go with that. Eva Odwar is a director in the Kenya Bureau of Standards. Barbara Hogan is South Africa's Minister of Health. Anne Pringle represents a health products association. Each has a different view of the role of Codex. Being an agricultural producing country for our industry, for domestic consumption, for our exports, Codex standards become very important for us in terms of food safety so that we can also be in the global market and so that we can also take care of the food safety concerns within our country. Codex just helps us to standardize the, the quality of food that we're eating, the nutritional value so people know what they're eating and it helps us to trade as well, you know, it helps us in, in, in a variety of ways and uh, we've been very enthusiastic about our participation in Codex because it's, it helps us enormously as a country. It provides um, a platform where industry can engage with government um, and we can get the best results by getting standards and guidelines that 
are acceptable to both. The decision making in Codex moves through eight steps between inception of an idea and final adoption of a standard. With more than 180 countries involved, it takes time to reach consensus. So in the end, after you get through this sometimes painful process of discussing in the committee, discussing again in the committee, discussing in the commission, discussing again in the committee, in working groups and so on, then you get a text finally that everybody agrees and everybody feels like they own it, like they can support it. And that's what it, the COSIS process is all about. Codex Alimentarius was founded by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization. It doesn't make laws, it establishes voluntary standards. Standards that member countries can use to set their own regulations and food laws. A codex is an organization which respects transparency and openness in standard setting. The World Trade Organization relies on codex standards to ensure the fairness of global food trade which makes it critical for countries that want to import or export food to make sure their laws are compatible with codex standards. But participation requires both financial and human resources. That's why FAO and WHO have established a trust fund and capacity building activities for developing countries so they can participate in meetings but also develop infrastructure. Now we cannot wish away or ignore the fact that capacity has to be built as far as the developing countries are concerned. I would say the last 15 years we have concentrated a lot of efforts on developing the capacity of countries to participate more effectively in Codex. This has meant raising the level of scientific expertise in governments and advising on setting up food safety management systems to guide inspection and certification activities. For example, Guatemala has benefited from Codex. Meeting Codex standards has opened markets for its production. These people have never had access to supermarkets. Now, with certification, they hope to have better prices for their products and better quality food free of contamination. Codex helps us a lot because the fact that they, first of all, control all the possible contamination of food and the preservation, transportation and uh, uh, production of better food for, for all the whole world is a fantastic uh, group, a fantastic organization. With populations expanding, changing climates affecting growing seasons and yields, and farm and food processing systems becoming more sophisticated and more global to meet increasing demand, the need for systems to safeguard the consumer becomes more urgent. Someone has to look at the big picture, and for more than 45 years, that has been Codex Alimentarius. The strawberry farms, the wheat fields, and the customers of a sidewalk cafe by bringing countries together to define a system of food standards based on science and built on trust.